Welcome to the Leadership Roundtable, a podcast with Dr. Conway Edwards, where our goal is to help you increase your leadership capacity. Let's get ready for today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Leadership Roundtable. We are so glad to have the one and the only (laughs) Pastor Mike in the house. Thank you for being with us. I'm excited to be here. Whenever I come to one community, I just always look forward to learning principles that will take my life to another level. Man, well, listen, we are always inspired and encouraged by your passion, your love for God. Obviously, what God is doing through Rock City and Birmingham, it is just I love to see what God is doing in the local church right. globally. Um, you, you, you mentioned it today at the Climb 24 conference that we believe is still the hope of the world, that the local yeah. church and say it's just it's just a powerful thing to see how God is moving. I'm going to jump right in because you shared some um, really excellent thoughts so much. You shared so much good stuff. But I want to focus in on this concept of levels that you yeah. talked about. Uh, yeah, get your notes. Yeah, Let I us like know because we this is it. this is informal, but we yeah. want to get the good the good content. You shared with us and you kind of um, alluded to the idea that congregations or leaders have to yeah. understand who's at that 5,000 level, 500, then the 70, then the 12. And so can you talk about that a little bit, what those levels are? And, and what that looks like practically in the life of a leader. Yeah, so I, I was tripping mm. one day trying to figure out, okay, God, what are you calling us to? Mm. And I was sitting down with my cousin at the time, who's a pastor, and he began to talk to me about levels. He was mm-hmm. like, Mike, have you ever noticed that throughout the Bible, all we talk about is how God blessed the masses, but we see this principle of levels. Mm-hmm. And we started talking about the levels. I'm going to give you the levels, levels really quickly. The first level is the level of provision. That's the 5,000. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the people who show up for the miracle. Right. One thing that's crazy is out of all the people who wanted to kill Jesus, every time we see him, for the most part, there's a massive crowd around. Him. Right. You right. know, he feeds two fish, five loaves of mm-hmm. bread, 5,000. Right. He's healing the sick in the crowd. There was a woman in the crowd. Right. Like, think about how many times biblically you hear the phrase, in the crowd. In the crowd, yeah. And she reached out and she touched the hem of my garment. So mm-hmm. throughout the text, he's always surrounded because what we notice is that there will always be a need for provisions right. or miracles. Right. And so oftentimes pastors get so excited because the 5,000 fills your sanctuary, Ooh. but they don't necessarily help you feel your fulfill your mission. Yeah. You know, so the 5,000 is a level of provision. provision. So you don't knock the 5,000. 5,000 is where you start. These mm-hmm. are the entry level. I'm just mm-hmm. glad I can't. Y'all giving away free hot dogs? I'm coming. Right, right. You know, y'all yeah. doing the church car wash? I'm coming. Oh, yeah. y'all helping kids get scholarships? I'm coming. Right, right. That's necessary because the 5,000 is the mission field. You have mission and you have vision mission is who you are vision is what you plan on doing Mm -hmm. my mission is simple i love god love people make a difference boom Mm -hmm. my vision for 2024 is strong i really believe god's calling me to be strong above the o and strong i put three levels like wi-fi because my strength is tied to connection Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. first is inspiration transformation I'm sorry, information, revelation, transformation. Mm -hmm. So my goal this year, what am I attempting to do? I'm trying to inspire people. I'm trying to move you. When you experience Pastor Mike Jr., be it messages or music, I want you to leave inspired. But I want that inspiration to lead to revelation. Not only move you, but help you see you. Because I discovered that Moses can take people out of Egypt, but he can't take the Egypt out of people. Listen, that's good, ain't it? Right. <laughs> it's, it's a truth that we all know because we all got some Egypt in us. That's right. And we know the Lord is working on us. That's yeah, that's right. so good. When you think about provision, even when it's not tangible, some people are just filling your space because the word is good for them. They that's don't want right. to give back to the body, but they want right. to receive the word. They want the worship. They want that feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that provision can show up in a lot of spaces, and you can have packed services and still not have any strategy that's moving you forward. I so agree. That's I really agree. good. And if we're not careful, many of us are trying to fill rooms versus filling hearts. Listen, you know, you right. And so for me, lady, is is I want to have a fulfilled mission versus a filled room. Yeah, I've discovered it was days we had church at the arena downtown in Birmingham. It'd be four thousand people in the arena. And we still left empty. Right. Versus the days in Forestdale when there was probably 300 people at church and nobody wanted to leave. Right, right. It's because you could feel God's presence. So the first level is the level of 5,000. The second level is the level of faith. That's the 500. Okay. That's the 500. What's so special about the level of 500 is that God continually see, we see people coming closer. Why is that important? Because a lot of people will come to church, but they don't necessarily come to Christ. 
Absolutely. Did you catch that? Yes. And what yes. I'm trying to say now is we need to make sure we have levels so we can put people in mission. I call it the mindset of the 5,000. They The 5,000 mindset breeds disloyalty by default because it's only present for the perks. Yeah. Right. Did you catch right, that? Right. Juxtapose yeah. or compare to the 500. The 500 is special. Why? Because they are the ones who desire to come closer. Mm. So what happens is these are they that are saved but not walking as close as they need to be. Right. These believers follow Jesus from a distance. And I believe that not coming too close is the issue that many Christians face. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what happens. You have people, the 5,000 are the ones who show up for the events at one community. Yep. The 500 are the ones who are going to tune into the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they mm-hmm. may buy registration. I volunteer. Buy, yeah, might yeah. volunteer. Yeah. But I'm not going to come too close. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they understand, and this is really good, the level two doesn't need more teaching. They just need a touch. Oh, yeah. The and connection. What, the connection. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. what it is. And I discovered in my life, Tony Evans said this, being born in the kingdom comes from conversion, but experiencing the kingdom comes from commitment. Mm, and what yeah. I've discovered is a lot of people are being converted Right. But they're not making the commitment. Absolutely. So they, they're staying at the same Oh, level. y'all make me that, go. That's yeah. the truth. And then you look 10 years later wondering why you still look like the day you were converted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that 500 is, when you're thinking about that, leaders, that's probably your early volunteers, yeah. people who are like, I do want to do more than show up. I don't want to get too close because actually proximity is going to bring accountability. Proximity, and I'm like, I'm not trying to get again. too close because you're going to be in my yeah. life. Proximity brings accountability. So we want that safe. You see me showing up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Don't ask me any questions that's about right. my life. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's a good mindset. I like mindset, that statement. Proximity it's the truth. We don't want it. Accountability. That's well, that's good. why we follow IG pastors. Mm, I don't want a shepherd that can see my life. That's good. I don't want a shepherd that can see my no, life. No, she didn't. That's why I follow. That's, <laughs> I'd rather follow my IG, IG pastor than show up in a community every week. Mm-hmm. And get my life checked. Mm -hmm. Because I think I'm just going to keep applying these great quotes. Like the word of God can come at me in 90 seconds on a reel and then I'm good. But showing up in community proximity, somebody going to look at you and say, that's not right. I tell everybody there are two types of leaders you're going to have in your life. You're going to have a travel agent or a tour guide. Now, a travel agent will book you a flight to a place Eh. they don't plan on going with you. (laughs) But a tour guide is going to be with you in the jungle. That's right. And what I tell everybody is I thank God for the travel agent. They booked it for me. But I need somebody on the ground saying, hey, don't touch that plant. That's poison ivy. Don't Don't get out this cage. That's a lion. He's going to bite you. And know enough about your life to be like, hey, hey, I see where you're heading. Don't forget, you got this baggage. If you walk in there, can you handle it? That's right. It's a... Man, that's a whole situation. That that's so good, which probably sets us up for that next level. Mm-hmm. After that five hundred, after you the five hundred, the, the seventy, the was it? seventy. Now yes. let me show you what's incredible, because I want to read this to you, man, and I'm so grateful to be here. Look at Luke. If you're watching, yeah. I want you to take really good notes. Go to Luke chapter ten, verse one through four. Now after this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going. Yeah. So that's leadership. Yeah. So what happens is Jesus says, "I'm finna go. I'm." On my way, but I need some people committed enough to go prepare the way. And what I'm realizing right now is a lot of us can't even, a lot of leaders can't become their full selves because they're having to plow the field, plant it, and grow it. Yeah. When they need people who can go prepare the way. Absolutely. That's good. Okay, so I want to, for a moment, I just want to kind of lean into that. So practically, what does that look like? Because we've all, not all of us, but you have, Pastor Conway and I, we've been in that mode where you're the planter and you feel like you're doing everything. You're yeah. holding down 10 jobs. How do you begin to create space so that when God brings people to help delineate those job duties, you know how to look for that? I think that's a mindset that's hard yeah. to get out of, to know yeah, that God's called you to plant for a season. Yeah. Then he shifts you and he brings other people to help you cultivate the soil. Like, yeah. How does a leader start to look for that opportunity to say, Oh, my role is shifting. I need somebody else to do this for me now. Yeah, I think I think it's the the Moses principle. And if I say this wrong, chart it to my head, not my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe he walked with the people. Mm-hmm. He walked before the people. Mm-hmm. Then he walked above the people. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of pastors, I keep telling, especially young pastors, they're so ready to have armor bearers. And nobody mm-hmm. know you yet. You carry your own Bible. Carry sir. your own Bible <laughs> right now. So for me, I think the yeah. people promote you out of something. You know, like I never yeah. forget, I would get there every Sunday early, open up the church. I used to take pride in it. Yeah. I'm walking through checking the trash yeah. and I never forget the week Deacon Corey said, I got that. Oh, you got it? Like, I got it. But I was still showing up with him. Yeah. Still yeah. showing up with him. Yes. Then finally, once I saw he had it, I took yes. my hand off of it. Yes. And what I discovered is a lot of people, a lot of people want to plant, but don't want to garden. Oof. 
You know, and I discovered they don't, they don't not, want to prune. It's not cute. It's not no. cute. And if you look in the Bible, the 70 are a group of believers who knew the power of God and empowered by him to be sent out into the world. So they paired up. So what do we realize that Jesus sent the 12 out to preach the gospel? He sent them always in pairs. Mm. So what I try my best to do is if yeah. you're going to lead, I, I'm doing this even now. One of my leadership principles, I have an executive director, but also have an executive pastor. Both yeah. of them together paired equal me. Oh yeah, you know. So good. without me, mm -hmm. they can. It's illegal to create by yourself. Right. Even throughout the, the the Bible, we see this creation narrative on simple things. They go to sun. They go to skies. They go to water. When it came to personnel, yeah, he said, mm -hmm. "Let us make yeah, man." Absolutely. We see collaboration. Right. So I try to tell them all the time that there is no a deficiency in you because you need collaboration. Mm, that's so good. I believe the seventy understands teamwork and understands we have a mission we're trying to fulfill. Versus trying to be seen. Yeah, that's so good. If you yeah. and if you're a young pastor or a young church plant, let me just give you a word of caution. That's until you get your seventy, be careful with who you staff. That's good. Uh, because five thousand and five hundred are great that's volunteers. Good. And if you start hiring folks and you got five hundred level folks on staff, it will you will suffer because yeah. you need seventy level that's folks right. that that's are right. that are really ready that's to right. walk with you through the fire. And uh, those those become that first level of followers, like real core support folks. And mm -hmm. that's that's a great, great uh, image. OK, so the next one you talked about was the 12. The twi oh, yeah. And we know the 12. But mm -hmm. but talk to us about the 12. The 12 is the level of fellowship, you know, and it's and it's a great thing because I discovered leadership is lonely. Oh, Jesus, Leadership yes. is lonely. Yeah, you that's know. why we got mental health issues. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about it. Exactly. They don't want to think they that you, you know, Jesus, you're not that. depressed. Yes. Mm -hmm. What you talking about? Come on, yeah. that's good. Yeah, leadership is lonely. So I'm so grateful with my team now. We're able to bowl together. We're able to yeah. do life together. Yeah. Um, we took... Some of the guys, we took a family vacation. Everybody brought their wife and their kids. We went out to the beach. Yeah. That's the level of fellowship. There are those that you labor with, but you can also fellowship yeah. with. And I think we live in a we live in a in a culture now that um, when I got saved, it was almost depressing because they said, "Come out of the world." Yeah. The problem was my friends were still in it. <laughs> like, if I do, I'll yeah, be by myself. I'm gonna be by myself. <laughs> But I think yeah. that's why community is so important in small groups oh, uh, because yeah. it gives us the opportunity to fellowship with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good with the 12. Uh, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Now, I know your 12 is probably a mix of men and women, mm -hmm. uh, so it might not be the traditional sense of discipleship. But would you say those 12 are people that – even though they provide a level of friendship for you, that you're still providing a level of discipleship. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, it, and so to me, and, and this is where I may get in trouble, mm -hmm. because my I was trained, you never vent down. You never mm -hmm. vent down, never mm -hmm. vent down. And I believe that to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, I vent with my three. Right. You know, right. I vent with my three. I yeah. sit in the room with Tiffany. I sit in the room with Darius and be like, look, yeah. bro, what are we finna do? Yeah, I'm about to quit this Like, church. how are we finna pay this <laughs> bill, bro? Like, yeah. like I never forget, we was trying to get a bill at one time, and we were excited, excited. They called back in the down payment chain. I said, just tell them I ain't got it. Just and I just, get it. Let's just steal it, man. Somebody, <laughs> some, let's figure something out. You know, but with my 12, they charge me. Yeah. Like, there's so many days I walked into Rock City Church and my battery was low. Yeah. And fellowshipping with my 12 re-energized me, you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of times, and that's male or female, like, when I'm writing, I have to be around Leslie. Leslie, mm -hmm. um, she came to me. She was a sophomore in college. Uh, we've been helping put the, I've been helping Leslie get through school. I done got her so many degrees. I'm Man. sick and tired of <laughs> I think I helped pay for her undergrad. Then she went and got a master's. So now she getting her doctorate. Like, and girl. so, but I love her because I be... I'll be writing a sermon. I'm going to talk about the woman with the issue of blood and yada, yada. She's like, mm -hmm. well, Pastor, you know, a woman is hermeneutic. Yeah. You know, this is how you got to look at it. You never had a menstrual, so you don't have a clue. So, yeah, so, yeah. So I get energy. Uh -huh. or, or Dre, when we're filming and doing certain stuff, it's certain people I want in the room. Mm -hmm. That's my 12. I can fellowship with them. We do life together. Uh, we on the run together. That can yeah. preach. Yeah. Because the this, because Jesus, they're trying to kill Jesus. And if you look at the text, some of them get killed too. Mm, you know, yeah. so they can handle my wins and my warfare. And your yeah. That's yeah, good. so that's good. Yep. That's good. How do you, this is the last question before you go to the next level. Do you think you intentionally build the 12 or is it organically? I think it's a mixture of both. I believe in two things. You got a farm system or a free agency system. Mm. So a free agency system is I can buy it. A farm system is I can grow it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so for me, when it comes to my 12, mm -hmm. I really think it was organic and God-given. You yeah. know, I think... Um, 
like if you look at it, Daryl, when I started my church, we didn't have nothing. Daryl was playing the drums at another church. He snuck over and would do my sound. Mm-hmm. Tiffany was um, a human resource director at a company. She would come over on her lunch break and help at the church. Yeah. Leslie was a sophomore in college. She just came over. So I, this is the first year in my ministry I'm actually hiring people I don't know. Yeah. Everybody else, God just kind of organically put right, us together. Right. And uh, but you also see this principle where Jesus picked people. He sure did. You know, so just I selection. Think you yeah. got to select as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. And you and there has to be a balance. You need that. You need the faithfulness of those people that came organically because they set a strong enough culture. So that when you gradually bring in external people, yeah. that the external people don't change the culture. That's the culture right. changes them. And so That's you good. still need that core that says, here's who we are. Yeah. Even if you change how we do it with new people. Here's these people say, are. hey, here's who we are. We don't talk to people like that. Yeah. I like your new idea, but but we don't do it that way. You know, that. And so yeah. it, if you bring in those external people slowly and strategically, the culture will eventually in, be infused into like them. That. And then you have a healthy pace of growth. And so I think as you're, as you're thinking about this leaders, you need that organic growth, but the organic relationships that just came because people were there for you are not going to sustain you for 30 years. That's you're going right. to eventually have to That's right. add some free agents to your point because you, you just can't do that. It's not the eighties and nineties of yeah. uh, team dynasties. And we you, building stuff, you and know, then you start growing at a pace where you need people who know it right now. They know, and they know more than what you know. I ain't got time to right. learn to teach it right now. That's I need, right. Like right now we're looking for a ministry director. I don't really have time to walk through the ABCs of how to lead. No, I need somebody who knows it. And, Absolutely. And I can prune in areas like that's not, how we do it. That's right. Talk to them better. Yes. That may have worked here, but here's how. But but I think the season determines what you need. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I never forget we had all these kids, and I was like, no, baby, we, we figured out it was two. Mm. We had one child, we ran a zone on them. We had two child children, uh, we ran a man defense. Yeah. I'm gonna get this one, you get that one. Right. Once we hit three, we was like, okay, let's run a zone. We need a zone. I got these two. <laughs> right, right. You, you come over here. Right. We got five now. Jesus. We need help. We got yeah. need assistance and all. <laughs> But the season, dick, we need <laughs> offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, because the season dictates what you need. Absolutely. And so I believe that's what happens with the 12. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Okay, in our last couple of minutes, tell me about that last, is it last two levels? It's last three? two levels, yeah. yeah. The three, the three man, and that's exposure. Yeah. And we see this principle where Jesus goes up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he transfigures. They are able to handle him in all his glory. Mm-hmm. So that three is a very personal level. Yeah. I'm going to almost argue you only get that once. And that's You're the danger right. of it. Yeah, if you that, get it. That, that's if Sometimes, you get it. Yeah, that's yeah. the danger of it. You know, my brother and I, we fell out. i never forget. Uh, we were bumping heads early on in ministry. He left, and um, he ended up going to a church, getting his own church. Mm-hmm. And that was some of the loneliest seasons mm-hmm. ever because here it is. I'm killing it. The church still growing. The church yeah. still blowing up. But I'm not necessarily having the opportunity to celebrate it with my three. Yeah. Me and the three yeah. disconnected. Yeah. You know, so I never forget before I started music, I called him. I said, bro, if I'm going to do this, I need you to come back and help me. Yeah. And he felt God on it, too. So he's been back. So for me, that three level, you have to understand, and this may be the tweetable moment of the, of the podcast, <laughs> disagreements aren't grounds for dismissal. Hey, man. Did you get that? Say Just that again. Disagreements aren't grounds for dismissal. Yeah. We not always going to agree. Man, right. you know, that's my baby brother. Yeah. We done had to close that door. Right. And, and get with him. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. <laughs> right. You know, Mike, Say it Mike. with your chest. And say it with well, your chest. Right. i never forget one day we got to tussling <laughs> at the church over a baptism. So I never get one day we in there and I'm telling him like, man, I need this right. I got it. Man, you need to do it right. Cause yeah. like we were so we used to get to fussing and fighting yeah. over baptism. Yeah. Like, cause no, brothers, the like, energy oh my God. it hits level ten like oh over my. the smallest things that people don't understand. You like, so I us, bumped him. I bumped him one day like, man, hurry up and get in there. Let you get in there. And we, uh, 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 <laughs> and the staff just sitting there looking at us. Like for real. Then we just bust. I was like, bro, we wrestling over baptism. I'm like, come. <laughs> but again, like that was my three. He's yeah. my guy. You know, yeah. Tiffany. That's my. That's my girl. Girl, man, she can get in there with me, you know. And that one, that's my wife. It, it's you only get one of them to me. Yeah, somebody who can really, when you on that cross getting crucified. Listen, it was only one disciple back. sitting there holding his mama. Yeah, the, when he's on that cross getting crucified, the five thousand gone, mm-hmm. the five hundred gone, 
We don't know where the 70 at. The 12 on the run, mm-hmm. the three hidden mm-hmm. is only one. My God. Holding that mama. Yes. And so for me, you know, you don't get a lot of ones. Yeah. That's why every now and then you have to be self-deprecating and say, hey, you know, I was wrong this time. Mm-hmm. How do I fix that so we can be, uh, become all God has called us to be? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. This has been so rich. This yeah. is like the richest 18, 19 minutes of your <laughs> week. So you might need to pause it, slow it down, take your notes. But I just want to thank you. This was kind of an impromptu That's right, yeah. sit down. But we appreciate it. And it is exciting. How old are you, Mike, if you don't mind uh, me asking? Just turned 40. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Listen, I'm almost 50, so <laughs> next year I'm going to be saying whatever I want to say. Y'all that's better watch right. out. That's uh, right. But, man, we love to see it at this age where even though God is clearly blessing you with influence and exposure and growth, that there's still a depth that, mm, that you're pursuing. I receive and that. We love to see it because the breath is easy to come by. That's right. You know, it's the depth. And that's so good. we love to see oh, churches good. digging deep to, to mm-hmm. poor pillars that, that are beneath the ground. Like, we I love the pillars that. That we can yeah. see. Um, but every pillar you can't hang a banner from. Mm. Some pillars just support. And we love to see that depth. Uh, we're just going to be praying for Rock City and, and that, that leadership and what God is going to do at your next level. I receive Thanks that. for your deposit Thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. It has been an honor to have you here with us. Now, just want to remind you that all of the resources we talked about today are available online at visit1cc.com slash Leadership Roundtable. Now, if this has been helpful, leave us a review, go out there and hit subscribe, and more importantly, share this with your team so that everybody can grow. We can't wait to see you next time.